Before we begin, I just want to say a few words that I forgot to mention in the last episode. In the last episode, I show you how you can use React on an already existing site to just sprinkle a bit of re reactivity on your site. However, in the real world, I would advise against this technique, mainly because of JSX, because as you have seen in the previous episode, React without JSX is pretty hard to use. So if you find yourself in this type of situation, my suggestion would be to stop and think for a minute. And firstly think if you can make the feature you want with just using vanilla JavaScript. If yes, then do that. That would be the best solution or option. But if your feature really requires a lot of reactivity, then consider better using something like Vue, because it is in my opinion better suited to just adding it to an already existing site, because it doesn't have that JSX dependency. Or even better, try doing it with Svelte, because that way you will end up with just vanilla JavaScript as a result, without any dependencies whatsoever. Also I have a video about that, so you can check that out. So anyway, that was my two cents about using React on an already existing websites. That being said, let's learn how to use React properly. And that is by setting up a project using Create React App, which is super easy as you will see. And then we are going to be talking about building blocks of React, components, and also props. Props are also important. So let's get started. The easiest way to get started with React is to use create react app command. And for that you will need to have node at least version 10 installed on your computer. So right now I'm in my react 2020 folder and there I will run npx create react app app. So this is going to create a react app in my app folder. So once this is finished running, I will have an app and an existing site folders. This is mostly so that I can version control everything we did through this series so that you can easily download the code from GitHub. Okay, so once this is finished, we just follow these instructions right here. So we are going to cd into app and then we are going to run npm start. This will automatically open our React app on localhost 3000. Great, so this works, now let's open the project in our code editor. Now as you can see there are a few files here, some CSS, a public folder and so on. We are not interested in any of that. The only file that we are inter interested at the moment is app.js. This is where our application lives. So if we change something here because of that whole tool chain that Create React App provides, this is automatically also going to change in our browser. So let's try that out. So I'm going to go to here and just delete this image. And if I save it, go to our browser, as you can see, the logo that was turning around here disappeared. Great, now let's delete everything from here and go to the meat of this lesson, which is of course components. And props, props are also important. So I'm going to delete everything and just leave this app header and app. So React documentation, which is by the way one of the best documentations that you will find, uh, says this about components. Components let you split the UI into independent reusable pieces and think about each piece in isolation. Conceptually, components are like JavaScript functions, they accept arbitrary inputs called props and return React elements describing what should appear on the screen. So to put it simply, components are the main building blocks of React applications. As I said before, everything in React is a component. And even if you take a look at code in our code editor, the first thing you will see is a component called app. Now let's create a few components and see what all the fuss is about. Let us now create the simplest of components. And here lies in why I and so many other developers like React and why React developers say that React is just JavaScript. It is for one thing because in React a component can be just a simple function, like this. Notice the capital B, this is a naming convention that lets us know that we will be using this function as a component. Next thing we need to do, we need to return something in that component. 
and I'm just going to return a button uh, which is going to say I am a button. Now we need to display that on our page. Very simply, we just go to our app. So notice that this is an also a function or a component. Uh, so we are adding that component into this component and we are calling it button. Save this and let's check it out in the browser. Right, so as you can see, it says I am a button. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Okay, so I am a button, great. Now, all components can receive something called props, short for properties. Those properties can change the look and feel or even functionality of a component. To add a prop, we are just going to add it uh, to our function. And then we should name our prop something and display it inside of our function. So we are accessing a prop called label. Now, to display that prop or to pass it into our component, we just go to our application and add label prop or label attribute on our button. Great. Now that we have done that, we can check it out in the browser. Right. So uh, instead of I am a button, now this says click me. The only thing to keep in mind and React Team makes a point of dedicating a whole section in the, in the documentation for this point is that props should be read only. And it says exactly this, whether you declare a component as a function or a class, it must never modify its own props. Uh, such functions are called pure because they do not attempt to change their inputs and always return the same result for those same in inputs. React is pretty flexible, but it has a single strict rule. All React components must act like pure functions with respect to their props. So please keep that in mind when creating components. Now, if you want to make your component a bit more nicer looking, you can also destructure the props object. And then your component would look like this. So we destructure a label, and then instead of props right here, we can just say label. And this will also work, right? It still says click me. This is of course a personal preference and you can use it however you like. Now here it would maybe be wise to use a special kind of prop and that would be the children prop. Children prop allows you to pass children directly into the output of a component. And this will also make the code in our app component be more readable. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So instead of this label right here, you can say children. We are also destructuring it and then we want to use those children right here. Great. Now, uh, when you define a prop children, you can actually pass it in a component without this attribute ta tag right here, like we did for our button right now. And we can make our button actually look more natural, right? So now it looks like an actual button. If we save it and check it out in the browser, we will get the same thing. Okay, so this works. Now you can't do the same thing with label. Uh, you can only do this with special children prop. Uh, let me just show you. So we are, we will leave this as it is and change this to be label instead of children. Save it, check it out in the browser. And now as you can see, our button doesn't even show up. Actually text in our button doesn't show up because we haven't been using this special children prop. So let's just make this be like it was before. Save it and check it out in the browser. Now it works. Now let's try passing multiple props to our component. We will pass a style prop to our component, mostly because I don't like the look of this button. Don't worry about the styling. We will cover that in depth in one of the future episodes, but for now, just go with this. So we are first of all passing a style to our component and I'm just going to call it a button style. Or I should say, uh, we are destructuring the props to a receive button style. And then we are going to say right here that style is going to be equal to button style. Great. Now we have to define that style in our actual application. I'm just going to add an object here with some styling that we are going to pass to our component. So this is our object. To pass it in, we just call it button style is going to be style. As you can see, it has a pairing of 10 pixels and 20 pixels, font size of 18, border radius of 5. If I save this right now and go to my browser, 
I will see this. So as you can see, the button is bigger, it has border radius and so on. So as you can see, this is just JavaScript. You create an object and then you just pass that object to the function or, you know, component. Of course, components wouldn't be very useful if you could make multiple instances of them uh, with different props passed to them. So let's try to do that. So first of all, I'm just going to create another style object right here, which I'm going to add to another component. And then I'm going to add that same button component, but this time with style two and with uh, other content or other children for that button. And let's try to add a third one with also style two and some other content. Okay, so let's just save this and check it out in the browser, right? So as you can see, we have click me and then we have uh, these two buttons with a little bit of different styling. What we have been creating till now are called function components. They are called that because they are well functions, like I explained earlier. There are also class components which are, you guessed it, made from JavaScript classes. And if we wanted to create a class component from our current component, it would look something like this. First of all, I'm just going to comment out our function component because we can have two components with the same name. Then you create a class of component which is going to extend a React component. To display something in it, uh, you need to add a render function. And then you would return pretty much the same thing like in your function component, but instead of just doing button style or children, or props but style and props dot children if you are not destructuring them you would have to return this props button style and this props children right something like this i'm going to save it check it out in the browser and as you can see this still works we now have a button component but made of a class and i'm just going to make it a bit prettier so to make this look just a little bit prettier, you can open up braces and then in here you can add multiple lines of code. Now this looks much more readable. Now there is a difference between the capabilities of function components and class components. Well, actually, that sentence would be true two years ago. However, with the introduction of React hooks, those differences are getting smaller and smaller but that is a discussion for our next episode. For now, just think of class components at, as components with more features or more robust components. So anyway, let me just show you one more thing, and that is of course that components can be used one inside another, kind of like this. So I'm going to create a newsletter component, which is going to be something like sign up for our newsletter. This is going to be one component. And that component is going to consist of an input field and a button. Luckily, we already have a button, so we are just going to add an input field right here. And we are also defining a placeholder. We want to define a placeholder through our props. Now, what we want to do next is we want to use the button that we have already created. Nothing easier than that. So we are adding our button and inside it we are defining button style, which we are also going to get through the props, but this time from the newsletter component. So props that button style and then props that the button children. And uh, we are going to get all of that through here. Let me show you how that works. So down here, I'm going to add an HR tag just to make a line to make this separate from our buttons. Then I'm going to add a newsletter. Now I want to define the placeholder for the input field and in our newsletter. So I'm just going to say placeholder, enter your email. Uh, next thing, I want to define a button style, which I'm going to do through button style prop. And after that, I want to set the label for our button, which I'm going to do through button children a prop, which is going to have a value of submit. And now if I save this, go to my browser, as you can see, we have enter your email, and then we have this submit button, which is admittedly huge. 
So this example shows you how you can pass props from parent components to children components. And this is something that is going to be useful for us in the future as you will see. So anyway, this has been it for this episode. Remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.